5.7, interpreting graphs of linear functions. Let's take a look at this graph right here. This is the height of a float plane. It starts at a thousand meter height and over the span of about 10 minutes, it reaches a height of zero. So essentially it's coming in for a landing. So where does the graph intersect the vertical axis? Well, if this is my vertical axis right here, it intersects it up at a thousand meters. That is our starting point. That is the same as the starting point would be in our equations like we did in last section. That's, that's where it starts. That represents the height of the airplane when we started recording this. Where does the graph intersect the horizontal axis? Well, right over here at t equals 10 minutes. This is our horizontal uh, intercept, also known as the x-intercept. So I could label these as an x-intercept and a y-intercept. Let's calculate a rate of change. In order to calculate a rate of change, we find two points on the graph. There's lots to choose from here. I'm going to pick this one and we'll go with that one draw our triangle. Remember, always do your rise or run first, your rise first and then your run. So M equals rise over run. And from here to there, we looks like we had a drop of 200 meters. Now, how much time went by over that? Well, if I go from here to here, that looks like two minutes because we went from three to five. So if I look at my rate of change, it's got a drop of 200 meters. Now that is a drop. So I should put a negative 200 on that and a run of two minutes. So my rate of change, if I do 200, negative 200 divided by two, we're looking at a negative 100 meters per minute. That means that the airplane is dropping at 100 meters a minute. Let's take a look at this graph and we're going to find the intercepts, the domain and range of this linear function. So first part it asks us for, what are the coordinates of the points where the graph intersects the axes? We've got our horizontal axis, our independent variable, which is essentially our x axis. And we've got our dependent variable, which is volume, which is essentially our y axis. So if I list them over here, the x intercept, it crosses the x axis at 200. My y intercept, right here, that's where it crosses the y-axis, and that equals eight liters. What do those two numbers mean? Well, the y-intercept, this one right here, means we started with eight liters of fuel in the scooter. Okay, so when the distance is zero, we have eight liters of fuel in the scooter. This x-intercept here represents how far have we gone once we've used all eight liters? Because at 200 kilometers, we have zero liters of fuel left. Next part of the question asks, what are the domain and range of this function? This is A, we're looking at part B. Remember, domain is x. So what values of x are we going to find this function on? Well, the smallest x that we're going to find it is zero. Because this function goes all the way from here over to there. So it's found on all of this space right there. So the smallest x is zero. The largest x is 200. I'm going to put units on that. And the variable we're looking at, in this case, 
it is a D. So D is greater than or equal to zero, but less than or equal to 200 kilometers. So the distance for this graph is anywhere between zero kilometers and 200 kilometers. Let's do our range. Now remember that is our Y. Now if I look up here, range goes at all, goes all the way up this distance right there. That's the entire, all the y values that we can find our graph on. Our smallest is that zero, and our largest is that eight. So our smallest is zero liters, our largest is eight liters, and we're using the variable v. So v is greater than or equal to zero, and less than or equal to 8. There's our range. Let's do another example like that. A. Write the coordinates of the points where it intersects the axes. Now, I didn't really give the coordinates last time. I should have. But let's, let's do that now. Let's start with the x-intercept. And that's right there. So the coordinates of that, remember coordinates are written x first, y second. My x value is going to be halfway between 40 and 50, so that's 45 minutes. My y coordinate, that's how high it up it is, is 0 centimeters. I look at my y intercept, that's this piece right here. It is 0 on the x, so 0 minutes and 10 centimeters on the height. Part B asks range and domain. Start with domain. Remember that's our x values. So when I look at my domain, that's this entire distance right here. My smallest x value is going to be zero minutes. We're looking at the variable t, so t is greater than or equal to zero, and less than or equal to, and our biggest value right there is 45. So my domain, x can be anywhere in between zero minutes and 45 minutes. Actually, t can be any, anywhere in between zero minutes and 45 minutes. My range is this piece right here. Now that range can be anywhere between 0 and 10. So if we're looking at 0 centimeters as my lowest point, we're using the variable h because we're talking about the height of a candle, and it goes up to a height of 10 centimeters. There's my domain and range. 